this video is going to show you a little bit about doing the second hand rule, which is the rule that we use when we're dealing with solenoids. Now, by definition, a solenoid is just basically wire that's been looped around. It, it looks like a coil. A solenoid on its own probably means that you're just wrapped around whatever. It could be like a toilet paper tube or something. It doesn't matter. If you've wrapped the wire around a core, the thing that's in the center, and it's made out of a ferromagnetic material like iron, technically you can then also call it an electromagnet. Uh, that's just kind of the, the specialization you get from making a solenoid with a ferromagnetic core. Um, either way though, the rules still stay the same and we still apply it the same way. Now part of what we gotta be extra careful about though is the way that we're drawing this because we wanna show that coiled kind of nature. So usually what we'll start with doing is we'll draw the core, something like that. The idea being that this is supposed to look like the tube. It doesn't matter which end you make kind of the circly, ovally part on, that doesn't matter. But this is just supposed to look like some sort of a tube. It could be ferromagnetic, it could be like I said, a toilet paper tube, it doesn't matter. And then we draw the coils. Now for the coils, um, it doesn't matter kind of the angle you're gonna see me drawing these at. The only reason, again, that we're doing that is to try to give it kind of like a 3D-ish kind of nature to the drawing. But the important part is that when you look at these coils, you can see that there is part that is supposed to be in front, and there's the part that you can't see behind. And you just keep on doing these loopy sort of drawings like that. So that's supposed to be the wire. Um, we really kind of hyper-focus on what's happening in front. That's supposed to be kind of the bigger deal for us. And the fact that I tilted them a little bit this way, well, I could have tilted them a little bit that way. The major thing is that this is a wire that is, you can kind of think of it in this drawing at least, vertically in front of the tube. Okay, that's all that that's really showing. So, in the second hand rule, we do have to change things around a little bit because our fingers are what do the coiling and our thumb is what points in a particular direction. And in any of the hand rules, we're always trying to keep it so that fingers and thumb are perpendicular to each other because that's what happens in all of these hand rules. It's what's happening between the direction the current is flowing and the magnetic field that we induce. So the biggest difference here is that it's now our fingers that curl in the direction the current is flowing and our thumb points to the end of the solenoid or electromagnet that is the north pole. Because this thing is gonna act like a big magnet when everything is said and done. So let's say, for example, in this particular sketch, I told you that the electron flow current is coming up in front. Now sure, I drew the arrow here. I, I could have drawn it here or here or here or here. As long as I'm showing the direction of the current being the same, that doesn't matter. Don't go crazy though with drawing arrows all over the place because then it just kind of looks bulky, confusing, right? But here, what I'm trying to show, and I'm gonna use this to represent the, the solenoid sort of shape, is that the current is coming up in front. So the current, and I'm using my left hand for electron flow current, the current is coming up in front. And then as I grab it, as my fingers wrap around, the part you can't see is behind, my fingers are pointing down. That's because if the current is coming up in front, it has to be going down behind. My thumb is pointing that way. That's what means this end will act as north. Now because magnets are dipolar, that means that end is south. And really, in every measurable way that you could look at this that would be important to us, this is acting like basically a bar magnet with this end being north, this end being south. So if I even wanted to take this a little bit further and I said to you, for example, I want to know um, what the magnetic field is out here. Well, I know that the rule for magnetic fields is that it goes away from north and towards south. So the magnetic field is coming out and it kind of wraps around like this and it goes back in over here. So as it's coming 
out of north, I would draw the magnetic field like that. Also remember that when we draw these little symbols saying that's the magnetic field, remember it's supposed to represent itself a little magnet, because that's all that a compass is, with the arrowhead being north and the tail being south. So, hey look, south attracted to north. That's the way that would point. If I did look at the magnetic field, let's say, above or below this solenoid, because the magnetic field comes out, and then it has to wrap back around this way to come in over here, the magnetic field above and below would look like that. And then finally, if I did draw a compass here, it would be pointing in like that. And that kind of overall then shows the way the magnetic field is coming out and going back in over here. Again, with the north end of my compass, if you want to think of it that way, attracted to the south. So that would be the way that we would use second hand rule to figure out what's going on with the solenoid and then we could say some things about where some compasses are pointing when we place them nearby. Just like with any of the hand rules, uh, instead of telling you the direction of the current, I could tell you which end is which, or I could put some compasses nearby, and from that, we could then figure out what direction the current must be going. I'll show you one like that. Now I am going to draw this diagram a little bit differently. I'm going to draw it with the two part being arranged this way vertically. It doesn't change anything, it's still okay. And I'm going to draw the loops coming around like that. Okay, now remember, in this question, I'm saying that I don't know the direction of the current. So what I will tell you is that I placed a compass needle, or a compass rather, here, and I'm going to tell you that the compass was pointing like that. So it's pointing upwards, basically, in our diagram. And I want to know, just from that information, what direction the current must be going in the wire to induce a magnetic field here that would make this compass actually point like that. Well, before I run to, hey, what's the wire doing, let's figure out why the compass would point that way towards my solenoid. Remember, this is really just like a north end of a magnet here. It is a north end of a magnet. And that would be attracted to a south pole. So that must be south. That makes that end north. So, again, using my left hand, because I'm assuming that the question is going to ask for electron flow, I start thinking about how if I grabbed it like this, my thumb's pointing the wrong direction. Because in second hand rule, my thumb points in the direction that points to the north end of the solenoid. So I've got to take my whole hand and rotate it like this. Now my thumb is pointing in the, uh, the correct direction. It's pointing up to where north is. Now I'm going to turn my hand just a little bit while keeping my thumb pointing in the right direction so that I get my fingertips in front for you. My fingertips are pointing that way. Okay? And don't worry if you have your hand with fingertips pointing a little bit up or a little bit down. That has nothing to do with this little bit of angle that you see on the black wires. Because remember, that's just to show kind of the 3D nature of what's going on here. The important part is my fingertips in front are pointing that way. So, when I look at my diagram, that means the electron flow current in front is going that way. I could put that here, I could draw it here, I could draw it here. All of those would mean the same thing. Current that's going that ish way, even if it's pointing a little bit down at an angle, but flowing that way in front. But again, I wouldn't suggest you start drawing arrows all over the place. Just draw it like in one spot, like if you're happy with it there. Just draw it in that one spot and then leave it that way. Simple answers are better answers. So in the second hand rule, what we're looking at then is if you're given the direction of the current, you can predict which end of the solenoid is going to be north and which end is going to be south, and then you can say things about magnetic fields nearby. 
or we can tell you stuff about the magnetic field and you can predict things about the direction of the current. Just like with first-hand rule, if you did have to do something with conventional current, you would just change over to using your right hand, but otherwise everything stays the same. Your fingertips are still the current and your thumb is still pointing to whatever end is north. Okay, I hope that helps you out with the second-hand rule. Good luck with it.